their verbal skills and then, and then certainly interacting with other and working in groups and stuff like that. So we do, we provide all this therapy early in life to give them, to give these kids the, you know, every opportunity late, later on in life. It, it has, a, and this is the thing I probably that touches me personally because I am a father of two children, two, two children myself, is it has a huge impact not only on the child but on the child's, fam on the child's family. So, you now as I mentioned before, if the, if the child's in the AI you program, Parents can you know, potentially go back to work part time, um, look after the other siblings in the family, do a whole variety of things to allow for a more functioning, um, better functioning family unit, and therefore you know reduce the level of stress within the family potentially, and, and reduce the level of um, marital breakdown potentially. There's, there's all there's obviously going to be other other issues there as well, but it certainly provides an outlet um, for children, for children and their families that are in the program. There, as, there's a huge cost saving to the community. We, we the six hundred thousand dollars I spoke about, we're actually doing some economic modelling, and it would be, that actually could be significantly higher. Um, there, there is just yeah, the benefit of, of helping children early in life, um, because you know, these, these guys are going to be around for another 70, 75, 80 years, however long it may be, is just absolutely huge on the community. And most, and. And finally, I suppose, is how, how you can potentially help. Um, obviously, you know, considering AI and you, your next fundraising activity, um, importantly, here as well, we are looking to have a we, we do have a small service on the Gold Coast. We are looking to, to, expand, that, to expand that service. And we do want to do that. And by doing that, yeah, we'll have a direct impact on the Gold Coast um, community as well. So, yeah, we, we've done this previously in, in, other, in, in other areas. Um, Certainly, having a, a larger service in the Gold Coast will increase our footprint. So the entire southeast corner is, is receiving a, a really good quality service. The other challenge that we have is, is working is working regionally, and that but that's like every other organisation. The challenge we have there is you have a small, you have a, a much more spread out uh, population base. So we can't go and do things like build a centre at Roma, be launch, and that is just it's, it's an it's a it's not the right model to use, and we, we have we have other ways to deliver the program. But for, for yourselves here this morning, you know, um, raise helping raise the awareness of AI in, 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 in at the AIU Foundation in whatever way you, is, is possible you, for yourselves would be greatly appreciated. And certainly, we believe that we deliver a service service that's having a huge impact on, on the community as well. So thank you very much for your time. I hope that makes things a little bit clearer about who we are and what we do. And if you've got any questions, I'm more than happy to answer. Yes. What's the average length of time that a child will attend? Oh, okay. So, um, kids will go through the program. It's generally two years. So, what will happen? They'll they attend in their preschool years. They'll go from um, two and a half to five, and then they will transition into either grade grade one or prep. We've actually thanks for that question. That's more of something I should have told you guys. One of the things, one of the other great challenges that children face from the program is <coughs> because we only deliver. Because we target the kids at those, age, at those ages, traditionally or in the past, people would transition into school or prep, and then the child would go into whatever educational setting there was. Now, again, that being a, a huge amount of change, whether you're a child with autism or you're a child who's going to grade one, there was a lot. Yeah, that was a really challenging time for, for parents and, and and children who had been in the program. So we have started to offer an educational support program, which looks at everything from. Uh, Providing transitional services for parents, giving, you know, um, speaking to teachers as the, as the kids go into the program, and, and generally helping uh, you know, teachers become more aware of the challenges of having a child with autism in, in the classroom as well. Because um, my little girl's in grade one, and she came home one day and said to me, "Oh, Daddy, there's a, there's a boy in the class, and his brain works differently to everyone else." And I was like, oh, "Okay," and then being the um, Medical doctor, which says, I think she's got autism. I think he's got autism as well. I was like, well, <laughs> whether they can say that. And then, and we went to the, the parent-teacher interview. And as, and in, the, in her class, there's probably two or three. There's at least there's one kid who's been diagnosed. And then the te teachers, because they see kids all the time, would said there's probably about two or three kids if they haven't been diagnosed, they probably should have. Well, they're certainly, you know, they're, if they're one mark, they're, they're, they're certainly close to being on the spectrum, but not on the spectrum. So, it's, and that's a huge challenge um, in, the, in the educational environment as well. Um, and we've sort of discovered this as well because we have a guy named <coughs> Tony Atwood, who's a, probably Australia's expert on autism and the like, and we got him to speak. 
and much to our surprise, about 85 per cent of the people who attended were teachers because there's just not that lack of, well, it's a huge um, shortage of you know, um, training and educational services for teachers. Yeah, so most kids with autism seem to be boys, is that? Ah, you know, <laughs> These questions are great because you're one of the things I should have <laughs> <laughs> in the present. Um, if you look at our logo, you're quite right. There's a four to one ratio uh, of boys to girls um, who are diagnosed with, who are diagnosed with autism. Um, whilst not proven, there is absolutely uh, a genetic linkage, but no, you know, but people don't know which gene gene it is, is basically, which, which which cause of that. And for all the guys in the room and my limited genetic knowledge, we're the ones that. Uh, Provide the genes when, baby, when, when babies are made, so that's um, that's part of the reason, and that's recognised through our logo. So we have AIU um, recognises all the vowels, um, and which re represents the communication difficulties that children with autism have, and the blue and the pink. The pink represents the one. The pink A uh, represents the one girl for every four boys who are diagnosed with autism. So that's pretty. Uh, <laughs> it's pretty good. Yes. Uh, a child with autism. Are they necessarily an adult with autism? How effective is your early intervention program to make them into adults? Are they without autism or just um, autism? There's no there's no cure for autism. So even when kids go through um, the, the program, they will and the games, mm -hmm. they will still you know, exhibit um, autistic. Yeah, or, or traits of, of, of a person on the spectrum is just that those traits will be reduced, so they and, and significantly reduced. So people, you know, they'll be more comfortable in social circumstances. They can go to birthday parties, and, and the, the camera can can go off and it won't create a drama. But these, yeah, the, there there is no cure. So they will always have it's part of their, their DNA effectively. But and I know again, this is from a friend of mine sitting there. Little boy was diagnosed as high functioning autism, so has an Asperger's. Um, if he went back and had a diagnosis today, he would be diagnosed as not being on the spectrum. But um, I'm sure that one, but he's not. I wouldn't say he's a strange. But he's a he's a if you met him, he's a different he, he's a different child if that makes sense. But he still mingles and does all the things. So obviously therapy is very. Oh, absolutely. Very and, and, oh, definitely. And and like a lot of the kids who go through the AI program, once they've finished, they may still go and see. A speech therapist or an occupational therapist, and has it on an ongoing basis. But I suppose the analogy I would use there is um, when my brother first started school, he had difficulty with, with spelling. I don't know, I used to tease him about it all the time, and then he went to university and got the first class honours, or no, second class honours, degree in the green engineering, and now works in the oil and gas industry in WA. So, uh, so maybe, maybe the jokes, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Maybe the jokes on me after all those years. <laughs> Thank you, Michael. Thank you very much. Um, I didn't want to cut off any questions. So yeah, and more questions. Okay. Yeah. More questions. Do you do it throughout the year, or is it school related, like 30 weeks a year? No, no, we operate as a long day care centre, so we operate like 48 weeks a year. Yeah. Um, and that's that's a re that's a recent change, and that um, it's been a huge level of change for the parents because I don't know the ins and outs of it, but it has an impact on how they can access their HCWA funding because the program is actually made that sort of technical issue but by doing that it does you know it does continue to provide that level of uh, respite for families as well. I can answer I've got a nephew who has Asperger's and he is an adult man with two children. Uh, the problem or the difficulty of any family who has a child with Asperger's or any of the um, <coughs> uh, any of the uh, classifications it's not identified when you're out. If you see a child with uh, blind, deaf, cerebral palsy, or um, has, uh, has Down syndrome, you immediately have the sympathy of the family behind it, not on a patronizing way, but knowing the difficulty they must have. But you never know the difficulty, which is exactly the same for a family that has a child with, with, this, uh, with autism. So <coughs> I've got members of the family, we're very close friends with a number of people. Thank you very much. I'd like to give you the certificate, Michael, and I hope we all think of this later. Well, it's from you. the um, from the uh, Hope Island uh, uh, Rotary, and it's pretty unique. For the, I've been in this Rotary a short time, and this is unique because they have spelled the name correct. <laughs> <laughs> That's very good. I'm giving it to you, Michael. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.